Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, 10 a.m., and good morning to those online. My name is Ed, and I'm one of our pastors here at the Bridge Church. I'm also the pastor responsible for all our missions activity, all our engaging in God's work with connecting with the community, with our companions, our friends, and connecting with the nations. And 2022 is the year of loving the nations, as James has just said. Why love the nations in a year like 2022? You can't even, most of you are thinking, I can't even get to the nations. And if I get there, I probably can't come home again. Uh, you know, when we think about nation states around our world, have you noticed the way that nations are starting to look inward? In their fiscal and, and foreign policies, they're sort of closing borders, keeping others out, protecting themselves. Racism is on the rise, isn't it? Extremism and, and all sorts of things is gaining increasing traction on the internet with the disgruntled, disenfranchised people of our world. So why love the nations in 2022? Well, we want to love the nations because of what God is doing. God is on the move, friends. We, we do live in the Western world where statistically the, the church of Jesus Christ is on the decline. But you need to know that in other parts of the world, God is moving fantastically. You need to be encouraged and strengthened by the fact that reportedly in China, there are 10,000 new believers every day. In Iran, in the year 2000, there were 10,000 converts from Islam to Christianity. 20 years later, in 2020, there are reportedly a million converts to Jesus in this country. It is the fastest growing evangelical movement in the world in Iran, one of the most closed countries to Jesus. Uh, just after World War I, the Anglican Diocese of Nigeria was established. A uh, hundred years later, this diocese is the largest Protestant gathering of people anywhere in the world. Uh, it's, it's known that up to 20 million Nigerians will gather to worship Jesus in churches today. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, these are the big global stories, but we, we're connected with little, private, intimate stories of our 24 global mission partners who are serving Jesus around the world with our church. Uh, Morgan and Olivia are some of them. They're, they're serving God in the Middle East in a country where 80% of people are foreign workers from many countries that are hard to engage with uh, the gospel. And in this church, 40% of members of that church of over 1,000 people were not even sitting in church three years ago. Many, many new converts to Jesus Christ and to Christianity are going to return to their nations trusting and believing in him. Well, think about Matt and Lisa Pearson serving Jesus in the Northern Territory in a place called Gunbalanya, where the, the scriptures have been translated into the native dialect of Gunwinju and, and First Nation Australians are hearing the good news of Jesus in their mother tongue for the first time in all history. How wonderful, friends. God is on the move, and we get to be a part of it. So we're going to love the nations because of what God is doing. We also want to love the nations because of what God will do. Do you guys remember the movie Back to the Future? Back to the Future, one, two, three, 1980s classics. In every one of these movies, a newspaper or a letter is, is brought back from the future. And, and all sorts of exciting adventures take place and, and whole lives are changed because of this news that has come to them from the future. Well, in Revelation chapter 7 that Jackie just read, a newspaper headline has come from the last day of human history. Here's what it says. God has done it. He's done it. People from every nation, tribe, people and language gathered around his throne, praising him. Open up with me, Revelation chapter 7. Let's look at this vision that God has given us of his future, the future of our world. Think about how this news headline should change everything about who we are and what we do and what we live towards. Well, God has done it. God has done it. What has God done? He's kept a promise he made 4,000 years ago. Because there, before this throne, is an uncountable multitude of people. 
God has kept a promise he made on a starry night in 2000 BC to a friend of his called Abraham. He said to Abraham, Abraham, step out of your tent and look up into that luminous night sky. And you might have seen one of these nights where you're miles from anywhere and just everywhere you look, new stars just appear. And you think to yourself, there must be millions out there, maybe billions. And then God said to his friend Abraham, Abraham, so will your descendants be. By faith, the faith that you have, I will give you so many offspring that they will be an uncountable multitude. And God has been working out this promise, this salvation story throughout the history of his people. This is the great story and trajectory of human history that God is weaving everything towards. And it will end up at this countless, countless multitude. Well, who are these people? Who are the nations? Who are the nations? Where will they come from? This is our tagline for the year of loving the nations. Read with me verse 9. After this I looked, there before me was a great multitude, promise kept, God has done it, that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. That's our catch line. Every nation, tribe, people, and language. People from every corner of the earth are going to be there on that great day. On the screen above, you've got a map of the world. Who are the nations? There are 195. We're going to say 197 this year because there's two nation states that we also want to pray for. There are 197 nations of the world. The church, the body of Jesus Christ, now exists in every one of those nations. Praise God, there is no nation where there are not believers in Jesus. Tribes and people groups. There are 17,000 tribes and people groups, but 7,000 of those tribes and people groups are unreached. That's around 2 billion people unreached for Jesus. Languages. There are 7,378 languages in the world. Only 717 of them have one of these, a Bible in their own language. Two and a half billion people have no full Bible in their language. They do have some parts, but strikingly, 1.5 billion people still have no Bible. Not even John 3.16 in their own dialect. God has promised you. He is directing this world towards this end that there is no tribe, no nation too hard, no, no people group too hardened to him, no obscure language group too difficult for him to reach, that he will not reach out and claim children for himself from. Friends, God loves the nations. And God is going to invite all people to come and join him in this big celebration, this salvation party. And take a look with me at this picture on the screen because I want to want to cast your vision high for what this salvation party is going to look like. Uh, this on the screen is, is a depiction of the great chain of being, uh, an effort by 16th century Christians to depict all of creation and the orderliness of creation. At the, at the top, at the center of, of all of creation is God and his throne. It's hard to see, but at his feet is, uh, is Jesus, the lamb, looking like he's been slain. Around that throne are the four living creatures and the cherubim and seraphim. Under them is a a row. That first row are angels, archangels and angels. Beneath them are us, human beings. Now, every single person and being above us, when they gather around that throne, take a look at what they're doing. Verse 10. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and the elders and four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped. Every being that exists in this universe, higher and mightier than you, is brought to their faces in sheer wonder and excitement at the idea of being in the throne of God, at the throne of God. And they pour out praises to God with the the highest attributes they can think of. Praise, glory, wisdom, thanks, honor, power, strength, be to our God. Friends, 
This is the greatest party that has ever existed. This is the greatest moment in all of, of human history. And you've got to be there. Everyone needs to be there. We've got to tell people that there's a party you don't want to miss out on. When I lived in Erskineville, I had a, a neighbor who had lived there for over 30 years. And he'd love to tell me about the highlights of his time there. Uh, he loved to recall the time when the Rolling Stones played at the Enmore Theatre. He said the volume was so loud that it felt like the streets of Newtown were literally bouncing to the beat of the music. And you don't need to like rock and roll to know that that would have been a good concert to bear. Friends, you have been invited to the most magnificent spectacle ever, the greatest celebration of all human time. You are invited to this Great thing. And, and, and the Enmore Theatre, small, private, intimate venue, isn't it? The throne of heaven, vast multitudes. How can you get there? How do you get a spot? Well, John was asking that same question. So an elder said to him in verse 13, These in white robes gathered around the throne. Who are they and where do they come from? Oh, sir, you must know, John replied. He responds, They are those who have come out of the great tribulation, those who've overcome, those who have triumphed, who have kept the course, held on to the faith. Those are they who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, to those of you who know how to use a washing machine, you know that's an ironic statement, isn't it? Because white robes and red blood don't mix. Why is it when you stay at other people's houses that you always spill the red wine on the white carpet? Every time. So in the last holidays, we were staying at a family member's place, and on day five, the great Cocoa Pops disaster happened. Uh, George, our middle son, had a near full bowl of Cocoa Pops that ended up in his lap and on the white chair cushion underneath. So I got the chair cushion out, and I began to wipe it, and of course... Amateur, that makes it worse. So then I put it into the Miele washing machine, the top-range washing machine, and, and stain was still there. So I thought I'd put it in again. And now the stain was still there, and the cushion was deformed. And you who know how to remove stains with that special spiritual gift of stain removal are saying to me, the one thing needed, Ed, was a cold soak in nappy sand. And I wish you'd been there for me. Friends, as we live through God's world, as we walk through our existence in this life, every single person becomes stained with the filth of our sin and rebellion against God. It is a stain that is on the fabric of every human heart. And you can try and wipe that down, you can try and clean that off yourself, but it will just become a more stubborn and stiff stain that refuses to go anywhere. There is only one only one way to remove the stain of sin from the human heart, and that is through the blood of Jesus. All people, all nations, everywhere on earth, only one way to have our sins removed through the blood of Jesus, because only God can forgive the sins that break his heart. Only God can, can cancel the debt that our sins accrued against him, the life-giving one. Only God can, can turn away from the anger that our sins arouse in his mind. You know the song that we sing. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It feels good to say it here in church, doesn't it? It feels right. But we're also saying that it's true in Tiananmen Square. For all 1.5 billion Chinese, nothing but the blood of Jesus will make you right with God. It's true to the 800 million Hindus in India, nothing but the blood of Jesus will bring you peace. It's true to the, the people living on the, the, the inhabitable island of Simuweu in, in Indonesia, one of the 6,000 islands in Indonesia, that nothing but the blood of Jesus will get you into heaven. Friends, it is universally true that nothing but the blood of Jesus will make you right with God. And it's pointed when we start to say it that way. It, it rubs. It, it's a hard truth. 
And so I presume we've kind of got three choices with that truth. We can ignore it or we can, we can dismiss it and say, oh, that's just, that's just fundamental Sydney Anglican thinking. Or pragmatically, we can ignore it. We can just sort of think it's all too hard and uncomfortable. I just put it to one side. But this is going to be an uncomfortable year for you if that's your attitude, because we're going to keep banging this drum that nothing but the blood of Jesus will save the nations. You can, you can sort of water it down. You could say to yourself, well, you know, God is a very merciful God. Surely he will, he will be merciful to the peaceful Tibetan Buddhist. Surely he'll be kind to the Malaysian Muslim. Or we can accept that difficult truth. With all of its challenges and all that it means, and we can let it drive us forward into action, drive us forward into loving the nations. The reality is, and this is a shocking statistic, that if every single Christian told every single non-Christian person that they know about Jesus Christ, there would still be three billion people who don't hear. So it can't just be those around us, the people we're connected with. We have to go bigger. We have to aim for the ends of the earth because we want everyone to be at that party in heaven. We have to go big. There is work to do, friends. Well, you know the book of Revelation, it uh, depicts time and time again people entering into heaven. And when it records how people enter into heaven, have have you ever noticed how it's not happy family checking in at the hotel lobby into their new accommodation. When people enter into heaven, they enter in exhausted. They collapse through the door like someone who's just finished a hard day's work and finally they are home. And there is great comfort for all who strive and work towards the great hope of heaven. Verse 15 and following recounts all the the wonderful comforts that await us. But I want to pick up on two powerful words that picture the great hope of heaven. What a beautiful place heaven will be. Verse 16, they're there. Never again. Never again will they thirst. Never again will they hunger. What are the things you would love to stick those two precious words, never again, in front of? Never again will they be frightened of COVID. Never again wearing a face mask. Never again doing a rat test. Never again isolating. Never again losing loved ones. Never again plans changing at the last minute. Never again having to to work and, and stretch and strain to stay holy and pure in a world that's so hard against you. Never again will motivations be wrong. Never again will you be mocked, ridiculed, insulted for your trust in Jesus. Never again will you be belittled because of your convictions. Never again will you be held back because you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Never again, friends. What's it for you? What can you not wait to put those words never again in front of? Because we are heading to a beautifully comforting home. Now is the time for work. Then is the time for comfort. And at that, at that place in heaven, the Lamb of God, verse 17, Jesus will lead us to life-giving waters. He will refresh, rejuvenate, restore your soul. And God, your good heavenly Father, will wipe every tear from underneath your eye. Well, this is God's great vision. This is where human history is heading, friends. A measureless multitude gathered around his throne from every nation, tribe, language, people, and God will do it. God's going to get the world there. And he's going to do it with you or without you. So do you want to get on board? Do you want to, do you want to love the nations this year? Play your part. Will you get on board with God, what God is doing and play your part as God directs all of creation towards this vision that he's revealed to you? Will you join the Bridge Church as we engage in loving the nations? If yes, let me give you four things you can do. Uh, Despite the the views of the young children down the front here, these are not drumsticks, there's bookmarks for you 
to, to inspire you to play your part in loving the nations this year. We've got four things we want to ask you to, to do this year. First, we want to ask you to pray. Choose a nation. 197 different nations of the world. Choose one. Love it by praying for it. Research that nation. Discover what's the, the, what's the context of the religious landscape of that place. What's the, the gospel opportunities there? Who are some missionaries there or some work of God doing that you could pray for? And we want you on the other side to commit to a nation. So we're going to send you an email tomorrow asking you to sign up to, to pray for a nation this year. A resource that we've got for you is Operation World, a, a resource that will give you statistics on every nation and stories of how God is on the move in that nation. If you want, you can sign up to that Operation World and, and have emails in your inbox each day about what God is doing in each nation. We want you to partner. Our church, we're, we're striving for 24 global mission partners. At the moment, we're sitting down on 21. We've got three gaps to fill. 24 partners out in the world making Jesus known. We want you to partner with our global partners in real, real connected partnerships. So every connect group in our church is going to be given a partner to partner with. And we want you to pray for them regularly, connect with them, sign up to receive their newsletters. So if you're going to be in a, in a, in a connect group this year, you're going to get a, a partner to pray for. But if you're not in a connect group, then choose one of our Four, uh, glo- uh, four cross-congregational mission partners. We're supporting Voice of the Martyrs. Our brother Tim Hawkes is, is, our, is our mission rep for Voice of the Martyrs, supporting persecuted Christians in Vietnam. Or maybe you want to partner with Anglicare. We're partnering in prison ministry in Long Bay Jail. And so we're going to see how God is on the move there. Or Compassion, our sponsor children in Indonesia, releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. We'd love you to play your part with them. I'm going to invite our brother Dean up. So we're just going to hear about our congregational mission partner here at 10 a.m., Kira Billy, and then I'm going to give you two more steps that we can follow up on. Uh, Well, good morning. Um, Hopefully the photo up on the screen is uh, familiar to those who have been coming for a while. This is the Lloyd family, uh, and this is uh, one of the... um, the mission partners that Ed was uh, speaking about, and that's one of our specific mission partners here at the 10 a.m. congregation. We've got Kenny and Rose uh, and their children, uh, Jenna, Noah, and Zach. Uh, this beautiful family, they, uh, they are working hard in South Africa, uh, in Port Elizabeth, uh, now known as Gerber, make sure I get that right. And they run a student ministry at uh, Nelson Mandela University. Uh, they run a church there, it's called the Word of Life Church, and uh, they have regular church uh, services, uh, midweek Bible studies, camps and so forth for the students of that university. They've also reached out to a nearby uh, township, a very poor township uh, called Airport Valley, uh, and so they run also children's ministries in that township. Um, just one little snippet that I wanted to share uh, with you about this family. Uh, is that I'm always struck by the personal nature of their ministry. Their letters and their updates updates each month are filled with um, names of individuals that they're sharing their lives with. Uh, Names like Lutho and Kwambali, uh, Natsika, um, and so forth. Um, It's such a challenge. It's a challenge uh, for myself just to work out how to pronounce the names, but more importantly, it's a challenge um, that God values these individuals. Uh, God um, loves the individuals, and so the challenge is for us as well to love um, and to want to share the gospel with them. So I love that personal nature of their ministry, uh, and uh, as I have been doing for the last several years, there'll be regular updates um, for the Lloyds this year. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dean. Oh, you got me? Check, check. Can anyone hear me? There. Okay, that's what happens when you get the sound man to come and update you. So, God is on the move, and we want to partner with the Lloyds and with what God is doing, and you're going to hear more about them. Our last two points are give and go. We want you to give financially to this church. 
percentage of our budget always goes to supporting these global mission partners. So give generously here, and you're enabling gospel work here in Kirribilli right to the ends of the earth. And go. We want to challenge you to actually move forward in serving Jesus amongst the nations. The nations have come to Sydney. So come and be part of Everyday English, where people from different nations come on a Wednesday morning to learn English and hear about Jesus Christ. Or connect with a mission partner. Go on a missions conference. We'll tell you more about them later in the year where you're going to hear about opportunities to to get involved in God's work to the ends of the earth. Well, friends, you need to know that God is on the move. God is at work in our world. And we get the privilege this year of playing our part. Evangelical Christianity is still the fastest growing religious movement in the world. It is growing twice the rate of Islam and triple the rate of the world's population. God is on the move in this world and he's given us a glorious vision of where this world is heading to. So Bridge Church, will you join us? Will you commit to this year of loving the nations? Let's pray that God would stir our heart to love all people from all places, just as he does. Let's pray. God of the nations, you will do it. People from every nation, tribe, language have their names written in your book of life and will be gathered around your throne in heaven. So please use us to get just some of them there. For those of us who are fired up, ready to serve, give us meaty and meaningful work by which we can serve the nations this year. For those of us who are fearful, Lord, fill our hearts with your love for the nations. Capture our minds with the excitement of what you're doing in the world and fill us with courage by your Holy Spirit. And for those of us who are indifferent, Lord, shake us out of our complacency so that we don't arrive at last in heaven amongst this measureless multitude and realize that we might have wasted our lives. Lord, help every member of the Bridge Church love the nations in 2022 for the glory, honor, majesty, and power of Jesus, our Savior, who we'll spend eternity worshiping and delighting in. Amen.